Hello and welcome back to FLAC TV, giving you the latest updates from the front lines of resistance on a planet in crisis. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that this content has been filmed on stolen land that has never been ceded, and the rights of the original custodians should always be upheld and protected in everything that we do. Our first story comes from Wangan and Jagalingu traditional owner Cody McAvoy, whose hugely successful Tour de Carmichael disrupted work on the roads all around Adani's mine and even occupied Adani's past release during his five day cultural bike tour. Nothing could stop the protesting peloton from getting their road train tans on as they withstood the dust and destruction of Adani on their ride. Tour's gone excellent. I couldn't be happier. It's awesome uh, turnout. People are so excited. They're so fulfilled that they got to come out. It's just another uh, chapter to the story, really. We've fought in the courts, uh, and now we're on the ground, out on country, doing our thing to make our presence known and to continue the resistance against the, the occupation of a, of a mining company on our traditional country. Adani has always stated that only Wangan and Jagalingu people are allowed on that property. Once we asserted ourselves um, onto that property where he tried to give us a trespass notice the first time and then when we ignored him he tried to give us a permission slip to stay there. I didn't accept that permission slip and I brought all my friends with me to uh, the pastoral lease along with my family. Well what comes next is still come back to figuring out different ways to combat Adani and combat other mining companies such as Gina Reinhardt or Clive Palmer which are trying to open up the Galilee Basin. We'll definitely be back with another tour de Carmichael. Isn't that great? The foreign owned mining company is giving out permission slips for traditional owners to practice culture on their own land. Isn't that just great? What a great world we live in. Next, we head to Gumbengia country, where the ongoing logging is threatening habitat and could permanently sever the ties between the indigenous community and their land. Indigenous custodians Uncle Mikolo and Sandy Greenwood have the latest on the newest blockade camp, Camp Nungu, and their ongoing resistance in the Newry State Forest area. Ginegay, Nanundi Bija Sandiga, Yam Gumbengir Nyami. Hello, my name is Sandy Greenwood. I'm a Gumbangia custodian. Behind me is New South Wales Forestry Corporation's destruction of our ancestral homelands and the blatant ongoing disregard for our cultural heritage. All the land is sacred. Mm. All the animals are sacred. We've got totems that live in this land. What I want to do here is to try and save this forest and other forests so for future generations mm -hmm. of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people so they can enjoy the beauty of the forest and the animals of, this, of, of the forest. Nungu Miral, the sacred place of the golden kangaroo, is just east of us here. So it was a special place. So we decided to call it Nungu Camp. Stand together as one and say no more foresting the trees. We stopped you the first time. If you come back again, we'll be waiting. Protect country always. Always was, always will be Gumbangia land. I should give credit where it's due. At least the name of New South Wales logging company Forestry Corp is upfront about their corporate exploitation of public assets. It's companies like Vic Forests who seem to think there's some sort of forest that confuse me. Removing trees and logging is the opposite of a forest. They're anti-forest. Planned burns have been wreaking havoc across Gunai Kurnai country, which have barely had enough time to regenerate since the devastation of last year's bushfires. Locals have spoken up to this premeditated attack on country, heading to the streets and the bush, with some resorting to extinguish the flames themselves. Planned burns on our own country. There's a 750 hectare plan burn. It's one of the few long unburned areas left in East Gippsland after the fires, which burnt more than a million hectares in this region. One night of surveying, we found more than half a dozen yellow belly gliders we recorded, which is sufficient to trigger a 100 hectare protection zone under the forest agreements. Uh, DELP actually put that special protection zone up the creek where they can't log anyway but now they're actually going to burn the whole area. 
impact, even if it's a low intensity fire, we've seen masses of hollow bearing trees lost. It's an absolute ecological disaster. It's a highly significant area, old growth forest, yellow belly gliders, greater gliders, mast owls, glossy black cockatoo habitat, the black she oaks. It's really important it's protected. It should not be burnt. It should never have been burnt. For a government so obsessed with jobs and growth, they really have failed to see how little jobs are needed in logging old growth forests. In world news, over on Turtle Island, or North America, First Nation-led protests have been halting work at oil pipelines at various stages of development. These water protection camps have been using direct action for years, resulting in hundreds of arrests that have delayed and stopped construction, and have showed the state that land rights must come before mining rights. Despite record numbers of COVID-19 infections, Indian farmers continue to protest against new agricultural laws that would see them at the mercy of corporate bodies. Camps have been established on the outskirts of New Delhi, feeding tens of thousands of people for free and schooling many of their children. This community resilience comes after a quarter of a billion Indians took to the streets in protest of these oppressive agricultural laws. And finally, to the entire planet, Scientists have confirmed that the Earth's axis has been shifting due to the effects of climate change. Rapid melting in glaciers has caused a large distribution of the Earth's water mass to move from the poles to the oceans. So as the world slowly turns upside down, we need to look to indigenous voices that are fighting to restore the balance in this climate crisis. If you know of any campaigns that you think deserve a voice, or if you know any companies or projects that deserve to cop some flack, then message us or let us know in the comments. That's the news from the front lines. Keep on locking on. Whatever to the fact.